your host and so before we begin i have a few reminders to all of you hey uh teacher yes. manjit can you yes. introduce again i think just now the thing did not go live uh, i'm sorry can you introduce like, again like, uh, our team yeah now it's live can it's you like, uh, introduce again uh, burhanuddin uh, just let uh, let us know uh, okay oh. uh, all right teacher good, good, uh, good. manjit can you just introduce the team again all right thank you uh, madam emily okay Hello teachers, parents and the wonderful students. How are you today? Good. Welcome to Pusat Vision Academy YouTuber. Bermula percuma, selamanya percuma. How are you doing today? I hope all of you are ready for today's lesson. Are you ready? Okay, before we proceed, let's begin our session by praying in our respective ways and for the Muslims. You can recite the Ummu Kitab Al-Fatihah. Let's pray all together. Amen. All right. Thank you, Madam Farida. Let me introduce myself to those who don't know me. I am Madam Manjit Kaur from SMK Methodist ACS Ipo, the moderator of the day. And we are lucky to have another teacher to help us in this slot. Let's do welcome Madam Heidi Chankin Ray from SMK Selang Usan Sarawak. Hello. Madam Hello, Heidi, everybody. welcome Hello. to ensure the smoothness of our lesson. We at Pusat Tuition Academy YouTuber will still provide you with free online classes. Today's session is a special slot for Form 4 and Form 5 students and it is based on speaking tips in your oral presentation. So, please take this chance to listen, to write short notes and even to ask questions if you need to do so. Students, are you ready? I hope you do. Mm -hmm. I saw many of you have already commented on the chat session. Let me introduce our teacher for today's lesson. We have Madam Farida from Sekolah Menengah Teknik Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra Penang. We are now on live on Madam Farida's channel. Please do support her channel, Blessed Fairy by clicking to subscribe button now please do so okay thank you the topic of today's lesson is based on speaking tips in your oral presentation be sure to follow the class up until the end yeah and together with us we also have madam emily john from sekolah menengah kebangsaan mak mandin penang as the control host. Welcome, Teacher Emily. Hi, everyone. Nice to see all of you again here today. We hope we're going to have a very uh, wonderful and fruitful lesson. Okay, thank you, Madam. So, before we begin, I have a few reminders to all of you. First, please pay attention to our lesson. Stop chatting and use the chat session wisely. And without further ado, let's welcome uh, Madam Farida from Sekolah Menengah Teknik Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra. All to you, Puan Farida. All right. Okay. So let me share my slides first. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Okay, no problem. Take your time. All right, boys and girls, be patient. Okay, you have a nice slot today, and you have a special guest too. Teacher Heidi, maybe you can say something. Yes, Teacher hello. Heidi. Oh, hello, hello. Yeah, I'm here. Yes. 
uh, today you are going to have uh, we'll learn a lot because this is a new format because everyone know that now the weightage is the same it's 25 percent therefore there's no saying that reading or writing is more important now all whether speaking reading writing or listening both have the equal uh, importance because it's all 25%. So I'm sure Jack Farida will be able to really help you and enlighten you how to attempt this uh, paper, especially those that will be sitting for SPM this year. Yeah. Yes, can you see my slide? Yes, yes, we can see a slide. Go ahead, Farida. You are doing well. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. So I'm Farida and we are live from uh, my channel, Bless Ferry. So how are you doing today? I hope you are in your best of health. Okay. Um, today, the title for our lesson today is uh, Speaking Tips. But before that, let me just introduce uh, the teachers who are teaching upper secondary. Uh, that's me, Farida, and we have Madam Manjit, okay, Teacher Emily, uh, Madam Gan, Teacher Heidi, and also Cikgu Giri. All right, so if you are ready, then uh, I'm going to enter the subject matter for today. All right, okay. Um, I have six things to share with you, okay, and... Uh, the first one is uh, on the definition of communication skills. Number two, uh, I will share with you types of communication skills. Then number three, I have CFR with you uh, to, to be shared. Number four, I have some tips for you. Number five, I have a chit chat session and a very special guest for the day and also uh, some game. And last but not least, I will share on uh, with you some tips on speaking English. All right. So, uh, let me show you the pictures of this man, motiv best motivational speakers in the world. And do you know who is this? If you know this person, then you can type your answers. All right? Do you have any answers there? All right, do you know who this person is? So far, nothing at the moment, Chagu Farida. <laughs> Maybe they are not uh, aware of uh, this person, but he's a very yeah. famous speaker. So he no? is Anthony Robbins, an American author, coach, speaker, and philanthropist. Uh, he's known for info, uh, commercials, seminars, and self-help books, including the books Unlimited Power and Awakened Giant Within. He has 3.3 million followers with in Twitter and Facebook, 3.7 million likes and popularity search is 261k each month. Okay, let's move to the next person. Okay. Ah. I'm very sure you know who this person is, right? We have seen a lot of uh, motivational videos. Uh, uh, sorry, Chegu Farida. Yeah. I think yes. there's a echo, echo at your your. Is it you're holding the handphone as well? Oh, okay. Maybe you can switch How off about uh, now? because there's a double. Uh, you speak again. How? You speak. Hello. Ah, okay. Now, okay. Already. Okay, better. Oh. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this um, uh, person, okay, Nick Wojcic, okay, born with uh, Tetra Amelia syndrome, a rare disorder characterized by the absence of arms and legs uh, is also a motivational speaker who has 427k followers uh, in twitter and 9.3 million likes in facebook and popularity is 201k search per month the next one is robert kiyosaki okay uh, do you know who's this person madam manji or heidi yeah, I've heard about him, but uh, yeah, I've forgotten a bit. Have you seen I him? Think he, I think he wrote the book about uh, a a student serving C student or something like that. <laughs> uh, rich. He wrote uh, a book on rich, rich dad, man poor kids. Dad. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, rich man poor dad. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And then yes, another yes. book it's is a very the, interesting book. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I go through that book. <laughs> I went through yes. that book. Yes. For educational purpose, for educational. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so he, 
is quite famous. He's actually very famous. Not quite famous. Eh? He's very famous. Yeah, and no, uh, he cool. has uh, 1.1 million followers in Twitter and wow, 4, that's great. 4 million likes in Facebook and 110 case searches per month. Have you uh, read the, uh, what do you call that? Chicken Soup for the Soul series? One of my favorites. Oh, okay, Farida. this is the author. This Afan is the author. Farida, one minute, please. Burhanuddin Zambi says the guy just now, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich wrote Dad, Rich Dad. Dad Poor Dad books too. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Yes, correct. Mm. All right. That's well why I say it's a good Burhan. experience for our students. Mm. Yes, well done, Burhan. And uh, yeah, he wrote this book, uh, what um, Chicken Soup for Soul series. And do you know that his uh, book has more than 250, 250 titles and 500 million copies in, printed in over 40 languages? So that famous he is. And he has 1.22 million followers, Facebook likes 1.1 million likes, and portrait research is 22K in a month. Now, uh, how about this? Do you know who is this? Who this guy is? This is T. Harp Aker, okay, an author, also businessman, and motivational speaker, known for his theories on wealth and motivation. He's the author of the book uh, Secrets of Millionaire of the Millionaire Mindset, published by Harper Collins, and I've attended his seminar once held in Kuala Lumpur. Oh, so, great! Yeah, very, very. Uh, you have that good vibes about him. And last but not least, my favorite, my favorite, she's my favorite. Okay, I'm very sure this, uh, you know, you like her too. Do you, Madam Manji? Yes, I like her. Uh, Heidi? Yeah. <laughs> very outspoken, brilliant lady. lady. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. I hope some of us can be like her. <laughs> then you'll we'll be working at the TV station and. Yeah. <laughs> <You won't know. laughs> and she has she has over 10 million people watch her show every day yeah okay very very uh talented lady now when we talk about all these motivational speakers now my question for you is what are the things in common between these great leaders and icons okay um is it the way they communicate and how they deliver their speech is there any difference between the way a person communicates in delivering his or her message towards the audience, his audience? Or does it uh, does that involve the way we present our ideas? So to answer this question, let us have a look first. What is meant by communication, communication skills? All right. The word communicate, okay, communication derived is derived from the word communicate which means to pass on information, news, or thoughts, and to spread to another or others, all right? What is communication skill? It's actually the ability to use when giving and receiving different kind of information. And definitely, uh, you must have a sender and receiver. And, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the, the message travels either backward or forward in terms of message or feedback, okay? And next, we have uh, types of communication, uh, the second part. Uh. So in total, what we can say about communication is it involves uh, the, the, what do you call that, the skills, uh, it, it involves uh, communication skills uh, whereby you give and receive different kind of information. All right. So let us go to the next part, which is types of communication. Now, there are altogether five types of communication. The first one is verbal communication, second is nonverbal, third is written, fourth is listening, and last but not least is visual communication. Now, when we talk about verbal communication, it occurs when we engage with others, it can be face-to-face uh, -face or over telephone or via Skype or Zoom. All right, and when occurring, when uh, there's a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction, Okay, words are important, but you have to understand that they cannot be separated from non-verbal communication, which leads me to the next, the second type of communication, which is non-verbal communication. 
when we do while we speak okay when we do for example i'm using my hand to explain all right when we do while we speak often says more than the actual words so non verbal communication it's a, it actually involves or includes facial expressions posture your eye contact and ha hand movements I or think even. it's body language, Farida. Yes, body language, true. Yes. Right. Today I did the lesson with them, with my Precisely. students. Yes. Okay, that is a, a clue uh, for, for, for the person you are talking to, you know, uh, to actually realize whether you're happy or not, or you're responding to their questions or whatever things being asked. All right. So the next one is written communication. Whether it is a, an email or a memo or report or a Facebook post or a tweet, okay, or, you know, all forms of written communication have the same goal that is to disseminate uh, information in a clear and concise manner. So the, the objective is not achieved. So one important thing to remember about written communication is especially in the digital age is the message. Okay, is the message. Next one listening okay the fourth one listening is it's the act of listening does not make its way onto the lips or list of types of communication however active listening is perhaps one of the most important types of communication because because if we cannot listen to the person uh, sitting across from us we cannot effectively engage with them all right, we cannot, uh, we can never effectively engage with them. Without listening, it is impossible to assess that, which makes it difficult to achieve a win win or uh, outcome, especially when you have a negotiation taking place. All right, and last but not least, we have visual communication. Now, we have to understand we are living in a visual society. Okay, think about televisions. Uh, which is uh, television that, uh, you know, they're running 24-7, uh, okay, Facebook with all these uh, videos and images. Instagram, okay, is an image-only platform uh, whereby people only post their, you know, pictures. And in fact, you know, these uh, images uh, posted on social media are also meant for these messages, okay? So in some cases, it might be, hey, look at me. I'm, you know, I'm this picture in London, or maybe I just want to vote, you know what? So others are, you know, um, are carefully curated to tap on our heart rates, uh, such as uh, animals or crime children, etc. All right? So that is about communication. Should be two way. Okay, it, you must, uh, it must be involving sending and receiving message. Therefore, it requires both speaking and listening. Okay, we need both listening and speaking, uh, speaking which uh, actually now in our school system, we have this uh, latest uh, CFR. We do have listening and speaking, okay, reading and writing. All right. Now, next section. What is CEFR? Okay. Since you are in your fourth or fifth moment, so you should be aware of this. What is CEFR? So this uh, CEFR, okay, it actually organizes uh, language proficiency in six levels. Okay, A1 to C2 which can be put into three broad levels okay the basic user the independent user and also the proficient user all right so this uh, language learners have uh, traditionally have been described rather vaguely as beginners or intermediate learner, learners or advanced learners so they are given letter grades like a a minus b plus or d or numerical scores uh, in reports or transcripts uh, but these grades and numbers okay do not say much about what a learner is able to do in that target language cefr however it is a little different how is it different Okay, it also identifies three broad levels of language proficiency. Basic, okay, A1, 
and then we have independent a b1 b2 and we have proficient c1 and c2 but it goes further and provides uh, it provides uh, can do statements okay can do statements at each level to describe uh, a learner's ability uh, in some detail and in a positive manner so in this way we are given a clearer idea of what the levels actually means another beauty of cfr is that it make uh, it makes it possible to um, actually to track uh, students progress along uh, you know uh, along uh, students progress from preschool up to uh, university and it enables to compare their own uh, development along the CFR scale rather than against the performance of other students. All right. So the target for form five um, school leavers is B1. Okay. At this level, they should be able to understand the main points and briefly explain the opinion. And the target for university graduates is B2. And at this level, they should be able to understand more complex texts. And the higher level C1 is requirement only for those who uh, will go into specific uh, careers such as uh, English language teachers. All right. So that is about CFR, the EFR. Now, this is the exam format. Okay, P3, we have uh, four papers. Paper 1, uh, writing. Paper 2, uh, uh, paper 1, paper 2, paper 3, paper 4. So we have reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Okay, the same goes to SPM paper starting from this year onwards. Yeah, we have four papers to be uh, answered. All right. Next. Okay, next, next, next. So your overall, okay, your overall CFR uh, level will be the average of every score of all four skills. Okay, so it must, it is, it is the average of all these four skills. All right. Now let's move to the uh, next section, okay, which is section four, okay, and uh, I would say this is my favorite number one uh, tips for speaking in English, okay, that is to always uh, think in English and use 5W1H questions, all right. Uh, what time is it now, uh, Madam Mandit? Uh, teacher Mandit, can, uh, can we take a, a short break for Bini? Uh, thank you, everyone. Just hold on. We are coming back in a short minute again. Yeah, okay. Uh, teacher Mandit, uh, okay, all right. I'll, uh, we'll go to the ad. Berikutan okay. pengumuman penutupan sekolah sehingga akhir persekolahan, pengajaran dan pembelajaran secara home-based learning tetap diteruskan. Oleh itu, kami di Akademi Youtuber menyediakan tuition online percuma pertama di Malaysia dari prasekolah hinggalah ke sekolah menengah dengan kerjasama ADD Malaysia dan Kelab Guru Malaysia. Kenapa bayar jika anda boleh dapat percuma? Bermula percuma, selamanya akan percuma. Manfaatkan peluang yang ada. Jangan tunggu lagi. Setailah sekarang. Untuk maklumat lanjut, layari www.academyyoutuber.com Dibawakan kepada anda oleh Academy Youtuber. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, excuse, excuse me, sorry one minute. Eh. Teacher Manjit, uh, later, uh, can you please look at the chat? Okay, thank yes. you. All right, thank you. Okay, let's continue with the lesson. All to you, Puan Farida. All right. We were talking about 5W and 1H. Now, how is it useful uh, in um, speaking? Uh, what do you call that? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. can hear you. We can hear you. Can okay. You continue. All right. So, uh, my next step would be uh, 5W1 how question. All right. So, let me just uh, provide you with uh, the with dialogue. Okay. Uh, Madam Manjit, can you please be my Achong? Yeah, Achong. Okay. Uh, okay. So Ali, Ali, yeah? Okay. 
What did you do this weekend? I went shopping. That's good. Hmm. See you later. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bye. All right. This a uh, short conversation might be pleasant, but uh, it, it wasn't too uh, informative. So now let's run the conversation uh, through the five W and one how filter. What did you do this weekend? So what question? When shopping? Who? With my sister. When? Saturday. Where? At the outlet. Why? We were looking for a present for our brother's uh, birthday. How? We rode our bicycles. Again, uh, hi B, are you there? Yes. <laughs> Can you be at I'm here. Oh, sure. Okay. What did you do this weekend? I went shopping at the outlet on Saturday with my sister. We were looking for a present for our brother's birthday. Oh, really? How old is your brother? How old is my brother? How is the outlet? I haven't been there yet. Oh, I didn't know you had a sister. How many people are you? Uh, in, in your family all right so you know uh, it is actually you can see by adding just uh, this classic 5w1 how question you are able to communicate with your friend even though it is just using simple words all right and you can use it in your daily conversation and you know get your confidence we have actually more tips coming on our way and for that, um, I have a very special guest in the studio, my ex-student, okay, a very talented and outstanding boy. Uh, I would rather say a young man now, okay, he's 25 years old. Uh, Emily, can we have him in the studio? But before that, before that, let me just uh, read his bio data. His name is Muhammad Burhanuddin bin Muhammad. Zamri, 25 years old. Um, he's working as a video games and e-sport journalist. A very interesting job. And his primary education, he studied in SJKC Chomhan. Uh, and then he furthered his studies in Penang Free School, Form 1 up to Form 3. And then he continued in Sekolah Menengah Teknik Tungkot Brahman Putra. Uh, yeah, uh, for, in, uh, for uh, what? Form 4 and Form 5. And and uh, he also studied uh, in uh, Delop Trading and Services Aircraft Engineering Training School. Uh, he was the head prefect 2012-2013, president of SMT Taputra Ramaputra, straight A students, 10 A's, SPM, 10 A's. He was the school debater, first runner up for public speaking with the Daerah Timur Laut Pinang. Okay, also state level coach or training English chair for schools and colleges colleges in Klang area. So, can we have Mr. Burhan Udin in the studio, please? Hello, Burhan, hi everyone. Yep, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Oh, welcome to the show, Burhan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It has been such a long time. I didn't see you. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing very good, teacher. It's so good to see you here. I think thank just you, by reading you. your details by now, uh, you'll be having a lot of followers already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy to All be right, here. Alright, Urhan. Now, uh, do you know that you have one of the most interesting jobs in the world? Gaming journalists and, you know, before we move into speaking uh, tip section, I have a few questions for you. Are you okay. ready? Sure, sure. Yes, teacher. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, can you speak louder, Burhan? I can't oh. hear you. Let me just All adjust right. my microphone. Burhan. Is it better now? Alright. My first question for you, Burhan. Mm -hmm. What do you do every day as a video game journalist? And mm -hmm. how did you come to be in that job having an aviation as your background? Alright. Okay. So, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Miss Farida. So, for the first part of the question as to what I do in my day-to-day -day job, so my job basically, I write news articles, features and reviews for uh, things related to video games and esports. Uh, my, 
most common type of article is to write about video game releases, uh, new releases when it comes to video game consoles, new gadgets and computers, as well as interviewing people from the esports industry. And as we all know, uh, the esports industry in Malaysia is growing at a very, very uh, high rate. So there's a lot of new athletes popping up every day. There are new games coming out. And so I interviewed these people. I've even interviewed the uh, youth and sports minister uh, to talk about his esports initiative. And so these are my day-to-day -day job. Yeah. As for the second, yeah. As for the second part of the question, uh, how I came about joining uh, this industry. So actually, before after I finished uh, my aviation school training, um, I was actually jobless for a few months because unfortunately, <laughs> when I came into the industry, that was around the time MH370 happened, and so there was a there was a bit of a of a crisis happening in the local aviation industry. And so after that, not a lot of companies were hiring. So I was jobless for a few months. And um, thankfully, in Penang at that time, IKEA Penang was opening, IKEA Batu Kawan. And I applied to work there, actually. And I worked there for, for a year. And while working there, during my weekends, I would spend uh, my free time writing freelance articles for websites. So I wrote uh, articles for, for gaming websites, for gadget websites. And, and I also started being a speech writer. I wrote speech, speeches for some ministers as well. And wow. yeah, and then luckily for me, one of the websites that I wrote for, they contacted me and said, hey, uh, would you be interested in working full time for us? Be a full time writer for us. And I said yes. And that's how I got into the industry. Very interesting, Monohan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. My second question. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite and least favorite part of the job? Ah, uh, Okay. So uh, my sorry favorite for interrupting, part. Uh, Mr. Buhardin. Uh, Cikgu yes, Farida, Cikgu I think. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, just letting Cikgu Farida. Farida, Cikgu. Uh, maybe your 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 mic is too near to the to the oh, okay. fan, is it? All right. Uh, it's having okay. influence. Okay, sorry, yeah. Uh. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. Continue, Cikgu. Okay, go ahead. Uh. Go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, so Miss Farida asked me what uh what is my favorite part and my least favorite part of doing the job. So yes. my favorite part, I think, overall. The whole job is a, is a good thing for me because I grew up playing video games. I'm a big fan of video games. I still play video games to this day because it's part of the job and my hobby as well. So being able to work in an industry where I basically talk about my hobby, I write news about my hobby, it's a, it's a dream come true. It's a really great thing. That would be my favorite part. It's just I'm able to do something that I really love and I'm passionate about it. As for the second part, which is uh, my least favorite part of it, I would say there's not really much to say because it's a job that I really love. I really enjoy doing this job. Um, I, I think I think the the only I wouldn't say least favorite part, but the greatest challenge for me is to is to be up to date with everything going on. It's such a very how to say fast paced industry. There's always something new happening. Like for example, like last week we had uh, a national Malaysian team winning the FIFA E World Cup Championship. It's a tournament for football video game. That was last week, and then the week after this is going to be two or three more tournaments. So I always have to be uh, uh, keeping up, and that means sometimes I have to watch live streams, watch announcements in the middle of the night because some of these announcements are like three in the morning, four in the morning according to Malaysian time. So sometimes I don't get enough sleep, but it's part of the challenge of the job, lah. Yeah. Interesting, Warhan. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's all right. Yeah. My next oh, question, please. Okay. Yeah, Sorry? my next yeah. question. Yeah, uh, Bhuhan, uh, you mentioned a lot about your experience. What about your salary? How's ah. your salary? Okay. Um, I'm sure if everyone don't mind me uh, giving, yeah, yeah, sure. Not exact. I wouldn't. I, I don't think I'm at the liberty to give exact figures. But um, I I make for for my current job. I make within the two thousand to three thousand ringgit bracket for salary. So that's my monthly salary and. Uh, for those, but for me, in my case, it's because I'm quite new to the industry. I've actually been in this industry for two years, so I'm still very new. For those of you who become like, if you want to join my industry, uh, you don't really have to worry about salary because one great thing about it is that if you work long enough, for example, my senior writer who works above me, he is earning uh, above 4,000 ringgit. And I have a, a head editor above me who edits my article, who checks my articles and everything. He's earning above 5,000 ringgit. And even in this industry, if you don't become a reporter, you don't become a journalist, let's say you become people who interview others or just you uh, help film uh, or make videos about, about the esports news, you could also be seeing salaries of above 5,000. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you very much. Besides the salary, what about your allowance and everything? Do you get any other thing besides this? All right. What other benefits do you get from your job? Um, in terms of that, it will depend on the company. As for me, because I work with Media Prima, the biggest uh, media company in Malaysia, there is a lot of uh, benefits. Like I think one of the ones that I'm extremely grateful for is that they have, um, they have, we have our own in-house clinic. So at our office, we have our own clinic, and all the uh, the medicine is free, and we get uh, allowance for for dental uh, dental checks and, and dental operations. So. Yeah, there's quite a lot of benefits. Uh, but because particularly I'm working with Media Prima, I'm I'm I can't say for sure when it comes to other media companies. All right. Yeah. Anamanji, do you have any other questions? Oh, that's a lot. I'm very happy that I met you and you have talked about me and shared so much. And this will really help our students. That's yeah, sure, sure, sure. Do. Thank you, thank you. No problem, Madam Anji. No problem. Yes. Mohan, my next question. Next question. Mm -hmm. Something that has to do with English. Okay. You are so much into debating and public speaking. So, what makes you to be interested in it, and how do you actually like um, organize your ideas while doing the impromptu speech in public speaking competitions? I see. Um, Is there any techniques that you are following? Is as for me, uh, when I did it to apa ni, when I did it in sekolah menengah when I was in middle school. I didn't really have a set technique. It was more of learning as you go kind of process. So because uh, I started only in form four, like form one to form three, I've never dabbled in public speaking ataupun pidato or any other form of, of debates. So it was only in form four when I joined uh, SMT to Kuala Raman Putra that I started to dabble into public speaking and debates. And so I was very new to things. And so I only, I took the approach of watching people and see who I admired, who I who I saw did really well, and I tried to copy their techniques. And I think for me, particularly, I was a, I really like reading when I was in school. I still read today, and I think that's a very good uh, tip as well for those of you who want to be better speakers is to equip yourself with a lot of knowledge. The thing, one thing people often uh, forget about having confidence in speaking is not about uh, a talent. It's not really something that you are born with. You cannot immediately become very good at speaking it's something you have to build day by day and one of the most helpful things to make you confident is to know what you're talking about and the best way to learn a lot is to read so back in smt technique uh, tukat raman putra i was a very uh, how to say i was a very big fan of the library so i always went to the library after school and one of the books uh, that was available there was the uh, was the memoir of uh, tun dr mahade it was in our school library and I read that book um, daily when I was in school because it was a very big book. It's a very, very thick book. Yeah. And it, it took me an entire year just to finish that one book because I, it was also my first year uh, trying to start the reading, reading hobby. And so when I read the book, I saw how Toon speak. And I also, whenever I had time to go home, you know, balik kampung from Asrama, uh, I would open YouTube and I would search for videos of Toon speaking. And from there, I would also see videos of other people speaking like uh, like just now like uh, teacher Farida showed Oprah, uh, Nick Vujicic and so all these people their videos were related to each other so I started watching their videos and that's how I started to build my own technique of speaking. I look at people who were very successful, who were leaders and I tried to copy them. So there was a phase where I would try to sound like Dr. Mahade, there was a phase where I would uh, try to sound like Nick. Uh, so it was it was a lot of experimentation. Good so for me yeah, so, so for me, it was more of, uh, because uh, I've heard some experts say this as well uh, in public speaking, is that you don't find your style until you've experimented with a hundred different styles. So you will try from like a hundred different people. Yeah, you try a hundred different styles. And then when you try all that, you finally realize, oh, okay, this one works for me. This one doesn't work. So you combine what works and then you get your own unique style. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Borhan, I have a lot of questions to ask you actually, but we mm. don't have much time. <laughs> okay, right? it's okay. But definitely, definitely I'm going to invite you. Invite okay, you. sure, sure, sure. <laughs> but uh, right now, right now, we, we will go to the next part of uh, our uh, song. Show. Okay. Okay. It's uh, a game. Okay. Show and tell. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple thing. Okay. I'll show you the picture and you're going to tell something about the picture using 5W1 how a one hitch uh, technique yeah all right i'm ready okay. are you ready yep but it's ready your to go. i'm going to be uh, make it a bit uh, more fun for you 
You just have like uh, 60 seconds to describe. Wow, okay. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Okay. All the best, huh? All, All right. right. So the first picture is three, two, one. Oh, it's a laptop. Oh. All right. It's very close to my job. All right. So we're going to use the 5W and 1H technique. So the first W that I always use is what? So what we're looking at, we're looking at a laptop. So number one, like if you look at the picture, like one of the few things you can notice that it's a very thin laptop. So you are starting to list down the, the how to say, the aspects or the elements of the laptop itself. What is it about? It's, it's colored black or dark gray. It's very thin. Um, uh, you can also assume that it's very light as well, so it's very easy to carry around. And then we will use why. So why would you want to use a laptop? That's second W, why? So a laptop can be used for work, for school, and for other creative uh, content creation like videos and images. And then so that will go into your points later. And number three is where. Where would you usually use a laptop? So people use it in the office, people use it at university, even in school. So that gives you an idea of who would be using it as well, which is the fourth W. So we just went through what, uh, why, where and now who so people using are students uh, workers creatives you know, people in a lot of industries so now you have a scope of who you're going to talk about the laptop to and then uh, last but not least is when when do you use laptop uh, in nowadays uh, if you can use a, a how to say context appropriate situation nowadays it's we have the pandemic going on so everyone is using a laptop all the time for work for school for keeping in touch with your family members and friends and finally how so let's say the topic is uh, how would you how would you encourage your school to adopt uh, using laptops rather than textbooks? So you would try go back to all the points you mentioned just now. Like what is the laptop? Like just now we mentioned that the laptop is very lightweight. So you can say oh if we use laptops in school, it would help students to carry less weight in their bags because they don't need to carry all the textbooks. Just carry a laptop, and then maybe we go to the point of why. So we say, oh, in a school setting, like if you can have a laptop, it would make it very easy for the teacher to arrange your syllabus because they can just share it through you via pen drive or via the internet <laughs> and so Already on. Already exceeded time. Well done, well done. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. I okay, did not keep track. Okay. I just let you talk. All right. Yeah. Hi, Johan. I'm very proud of you that you've got so many ideas to share with students <laughs> and just about the laptop, you can talk very well. This will really inspire <laughs> our students. You know, to try... Okay, well done, Bohan, and keep thank up you, the good job. You. you are an inspiration to all students. This is from thank your teacher, you. Anna. True. All right? Thank you, teacher, Anna. Thank uh, you. Yes. Second picture. Now I'm going to put the timer. All right. Uh, oh, wow. It's close uh, to heart. <laughs> Okay, what are we looking at? What? Number one, what? We're looking at a video game and it's a shooting video game. Usually in the industry, we call it a first person shooter because the camera is at right, your face or so first person. And now we're looking at why. So why do people play video games uh, for enjoyment, for leisure time, uh, often as a form of escapism. Escapism means you want to uh, escape from the troubles of your life. And then where? Where do people usually play video games? At home. But nowadays, because video games are also available on phones, you can play them anywhere you go. And then when? When do people, people play uh, video games? Usually in their free time, when they have uh, time during the weekend or maybe after work or school. But of course, they have to make sure they play uh, at a healthy amount. Do not become addicted to gaming. And then who? Who plays video games? So usually we would say young children or teenagers play, but nowadays we live in an age where everybody is playing video games because there's so many types of video games, even puzzle games where uh, people older than me uh, really enjoy those games. Even I myself play puzzle games sometimes. And so how? Time's Maybe the topic. Oh, okay. So I couldn't reach the, the how. I couldn't reach the how. Yes. <laughs> how, how. Just finish the how. There you go. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, sorry. Finish the how. So how, yeah. because I don't know what the topic is. So let's say... Uh, Let's say, how do you, how would you use edu uh, video games for education? Let's say that's the topic. So you go back to the points just now. Let's say that, oh, education is also used for uh, the older generation. Maybe you can use it to teach people life skills, such as there are games where you can use to manage restaurants, games that simulate uh, how to manage a business, because those games do exist. So you could use those points like, okay, so we make, a, we make a, a, an essay or a speech about, okay, here are the points that would help uh, older people or senior citizens using video games to learn life skills. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, next picture. I think you love this picture. Okay, all right. Let's see. Superman. <laughs> wow. Okay, so what are we looking at? We are looking at Superman, a superhero from DC Comics. Let's see why. 
So why does Superman exist? Well, Superman exists because he was born on an alien planet and then he was uh, uh, rescued from that planet to come to Earth. But particularly, he's here because he's here to save the day. He's here to save people, to be a savior to, to people in distress, you know, even cats on trees. Uh, so where? Superman is not He's usually in America, uh, in the city of Metropolis, if I'm not mistaken. That's his hometown. Uh, but because he's Superman, he can fly very fast. He can go all around the world. So when? Superman doesn't really need to sleep actually so he is saving people 24 <laughs> 7 and uh, uh Sanan Chakap, he's always there when you need help that's superman oh, I and we and have so... a superman in malaysia <laughs> maybe we do maybe we do we haven't found him yet he's very good at hiding his identity so okay. who is he that was the that was the question Ma madam manjit brought up who is superman is yeah. that superman in malaysia we don't know so yeah, yeah. so superman maybe he's a <laughs> So Superman, he's a superhero. He's also his real identity is Clark Kent. He works as a, as a journalist like me. Oh, I might have given it away. Yeah. So uh, last but not least, how? Yeah. So last but not least is how. So how is Superman like? Maybe the the argument is that how is Superman a, a benefit to the world? How is Superman a good person? So you can list down that. Oh, he helps people. He never sleeps. He's always there twenty four seven for you. And um, he also doesn't trouble people. He keeps his identity a a, 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 a secret, and so he's not always being followed by paparazzi. So maybe like that. <laughs> One minute and four seconds. All right. Next. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I saw Very someone good. mention no, in the chat. Okay. PUBG. Then someone yeah. say, Muhammad Akmal says he remind me to my class monitor, Mister Farhan Zulbahari Mechi. Yes. Oh. Also the way he speaks. <laughs> So okay, okay, okay. I hope right. Mr. Farhan is doing well. Yeah. Farhan is here. Farhan, how are you? All right. The next All one. Right. Next one. Number four. Number four. Ta-da. Wow. <laughs> wow. I miss the place so much. I miss the place so much. Okay. So, number one, W, one. what are we looking at? We're looking at Penang Free School, particularly the gate of Penang Free School. So Penang Free School is my former sekolah berdengah, which I went to from Form 1 to Form 3. Why? So why does Penang Free School exist? To educate students, of course, to train and bring up young men like me to make sure that we become uh, productive members of society, that we do good to our parents and the people around us. Uh, where? So Penang Free School is located in Penang, of course, Penang Free School. Uh, when? So Penang Free School has existed for more than 200 years now. Yay! Uh, it has. It was started in. It was found in 1816, and still stands today as one of the most uh, recognizable schools, not only in Malaysia but in Southeast Asia. Uh, who who goes to Penang Free School? Aside from the many 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 students, uh, we have very very talented teachers, very dedicated teachers. We have uh, security personnel who jaga, who take care of the students day and night. Uh, we have the auntie and akak cleaners who always help out who always uh, make sure the school is is a clean place and so last but not least how so maybe let's say that the topic is how do we preserve an old school like Penang Free School so maybe we can say uh, sorry sorry that's not really relevant to other points so for the how um, maybe we should say how do we make another historical and prestigious school like Penang Free School so we could go back to the other points and say make sure that the goal is to create productive member society, make sure we have uh, talented teachers who are always giving their best to teach the students. Yeah. Well done, well done. Last yeah. but not least. Oh, we have Last one more. Wow. Least. Okay, okay, okay. Ah. Uh, <laughs> okay, another, another love of my heart. Okay, so we have number one, W, what? So this is Sekolah Menengah Teknik Tukar Drama Putra. A school that I went to from Form 4 to Form 5 and this is actually a picture of the Asrama Putra uh, where I lived there for two years and uh, why? So why does Sekolah Menengah Teknik exist? Uh, aside from producing very uh, talented and very productive member society, it was also to produce engineers. Sekolah Menengah Teknik, the point is to introduce uh, engineers and technicians into our workforce. Uh, where? So Penang, uh, sorry, SMT TARP is located in Penang. Uh, when? So SMT Tark is also another very old school in Penang and it's been here for quite a while. And who? So the people who go to Penang, uh, sorry, I keep saying Penang Free School. The people <laughs> who go to SMT Tark are students who aspire to become engineers. So if you want to study uh, civil engineering, mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, you can go to Sekolah Menengah oh, Teknik Tukar Ramaputra. Yeah? 
Even accountancy, yes, thank you, uh, Teacher Farida. Even accountancy as well. And so how? So maybe the question is, uh, how would you prepare students to become engineers? And so you would say, uh, Sekolah Mengah Teknik is one such school because they prepare syllabus in the sense that the syllabus is aimed towards making you prepared to learn things like uh, engineering, uh, science, physics, chemistry, and so on. Wow. Okay, Thank try my best. Question. Try my best. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and last one, last one. Okay. okay. My task for you is, mm -hmm. okay, I want you to connect all these five pictures and then tell us a story. Ah, uh, okay. It's basically a story about myself then. <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I still use the 5W1H? Uh, five yes. Okay, all right. Example. All right. Okay. So, uh, for the sake of uh, giving examples for the students, so let's say uh, I'm going to use the five W one H. So let's say number one, what? So what we're looking at is basically a very short summary of my life, um, except for mm -hmm. Superman. I'm not Superman, of course, uh, but I'm a big fan of superheroes. Uh, so this is we're looking at a short summary of my life, the things I like and the things that I've gone through. And why are we looking at it? Because today I'm an invited speaker for the uh, class tuition. And then where? Where did it all take place? So it took place in a range of places. It took place in Penang. It took place here in KL where I'm currently living. And for Superman, it took place all around the world. Uh, so when did this all happen? So this all has happened in the past uh, 25 years of my life now. Yep, because I'm 25 this year. And so this, all these five things have, uh, have, have come into existence in the past uh, 25 years for my life. And then who? The who is me, of course. So this will be about myself. So we've gone through the five W. So how, maybe the story is how I came to be this person. And these five points is basically a summary of that. I went to uh, Penang Free School. I went to TAP. And then I had a hobby playing with video games. I also uh, really, really, uh, I, I really enjoyed learning about computers, laptops, and phones. And at the same time, point number three, Superman, I'm a big nerd. I love uh, superheroes. I love science fiction, stuff like that. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Work hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think oh, I think I say teachers, all the any students also teachers? enjoy. Yeah, all the students yeah. also enjoy. Say it's very interesting and thank fun you. lesson. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. If if the students have any question for me, do let me know. If the yes, students I have any question for me. Yeah. We have a lot yeah. of questions you can ask for Han and very thank you. Live and it's law whereby everybody is listening. <laughs> and paying attention to you you know thank why you, thank you have you. so much to share ah that's good that's good i i'm happy ah. to hear that <laughs> yes i think uh I, if i may i, I want to share one one advice with the students who, who yes, are hearing please. right now because i think yes. usually when people hear me talk spontaneously they always think oh it's very difficult like how does he do it like how does he speak so naturally without preparing without having a script so for students who are watching the live stream uh, one thing I'll tell you is that don't worry about it. Like this is not a skill that that I built last night and today I can show off. This is <laughs> something that took me years to train. I've been doing this for years. I, aside from zaman sekolah where I uh, did public speaking and debates. After that, I went into university. I worked with engineers and pilots, so I spoke to them every day. And then after that. I went into IKEA, I sold furniture. So I sold furniture every single day for an entire year. I sold sofas, I sold chairs, tables, and so I had to learn a lot of things. I spoke with people every single day. And then after that, I became a journalist. I interviewed people, I spoke to athletes, I spoke to ministers. And then after this, my next step in my career is that I'll be hosting uh, esports tournaments and I'll be a marketing person as well. So I have to speak with clients. And so don't compare yourself to me directly. Don't immediately think, oh, I'll never be like him. Don't think like that. Because when I was your age, I thought the same thing when I saw Tun Dr. Mahathir speak. I thought the same thing when I saw uh, Oprah speak. I thought, Ado, I will never be like them. It's so difficult. They are so talented. And it turns out, this thing, it takes years and years of practice. So don't worry. Just keep doing your best, inshallah. Every day, you have to practice speaking. Every day, you have to read something new. You don't have to read a book. Maybe read an article online. Learn something new every day so that in your mind, you always have something to talk about. That's the key of being a good spontaneous speaker. You have a lot of knowledge. So like for me, I read books every day. Like even right now, I'm reading a book, uh, the current book uh, for your information to, 
just to share with students like I'm a big fan of non-fiction so current book I'm reading is about the history of weights so it's a book about how uh, how France the Gara Pranchis how they found out what is exactly one kilogram and what exactly one meter so it's very pointless knowledge if you think about it like I don't need to know this but when you think about it, because the book is about science, so it teaches you how to explain things to people. And it's about history as well. Much like, oh, it started here, and this is how we came to be. So skills like that is what you learn when you read books. So yeah, don't worry. Yeah, during, before, and after. Yeah, during, before, and after, correct. So don't worry if you're not at my level. Don't worry if you can't even like speak confidently right now. Inshallah, that will come. The thing that's most important is practice. Just practice every day. Practice speaking with your friends. Uh, and right now, we're living in an online age. So if you have uh, friends who, maybe your, your real life friends you cannot meet because of pandemic, use uh, online venues like chatting online. Yeah, use English. Don't be uh, shy or ashamed because there was also a trend back in my age. Ada ramai orang yang malu untuk speak English. They are afraid of being teased, afraid of being made fun of. Don't think like that. Because another ex-student of Miss Farida, his name is, uh, we used to call him Mamu, you know, because we were in Penang. Yeah, I'm Shamirul. sure Miss Farida remember Shamirul, Mamu. This is a surprise yeah, Shamirul. So Shamirul, uh, just a, uh, sorry, sorry teacher, yeah, if I'm st- extending a bit. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I no, think okay. because, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, because okay. when I was teaching communication in KL, this is a story that always inspires students. So when I was in Form 4, I had a friend named Shamirul, uh, still my friend to this day. He could not speak English very well. He was very shy. He was very, he lacked confidence in speaking English. Dia tak boleh bercakap. And he would be very, how to say, terketa-keta. He would be very shaky when speaking English. And then, what he did was that we live in the asrama together. So we live in the hostel together. So every night, Shamiro would come to me and say, Burhan, tolong, tolong ajak aku English. Please teach me how to speak English. And I would help him. And what we did was that he became my English partner. So when he wanted to practice English, dia datang. He would come to my room and jom Burhan, let's speak English. He did this every single day in Asrama. And Shamiro went from that. Lepas form 5, he got straight A's and he flew to London. He flew to the UK. He studied uh, accountancy in UK and now he's back in Malaysia serving the country. So don't, don't, be, don't be afraid. Don't be shy of your level right now. Just keep doing your best. But you have to show your passion. You have to show your dedication because this is a very important skill. Because this has changed Shamiro's life. It has changed my life as well. Being able to speak and give your ideas uh, effectively. So, jangan takut. Slowly, practice every day. Inshallah, you'll get there. Yeah. Another, another one more question for you, Barhat. Uh, Go ahead. How do you like to share with the students how to speak confidently in the, in the public, in the crowd? How to speak confidently in front of a crowd? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think first of all, I answer the, the, the question in a very, uh, how to say, yeah. the common way lah. So Comedy. tips that I use lah when I started, or when, because I was very nervous when I started, when I speak on stage, I would go like this. My hand would be shaking. I was very nervous. <laughs> so uh, what I did was that one tip is to never look at people's faces. I would find corners around the crowds where there weren't people sitting there. So I would look at the cement ground, look at the wall. I would look like a, like a painting or something. So that would make me less nervous because I'm not focusing on people's face. So for beginners, you can try doing that. Uh, another thing you do is that to be very prepared. Also, okay, sorry, scratch that. Number two, the most important thing. Oh, sorry, pintu to tutu. Uh, number two, the most important thing. I hope. I think that was my wife. Coach. She closed the door. Tiba takut ada noise. Maybe she wants to vacuum the house. And then uh, number two is that you shouldn't lack confidence because you think people will laugh at you. Jangan takut because you think, um, alamak, what if I say something wrong and then people, people know that I didn't prepare or I'm not very smart. Here's the thing. The crowd doesn't know what you're going to say anyway. Usually, when you do public speaking, the people watching you speak, they, they, they pun tak tahu apa kita nak cakap. They have no idea what our content is. So, be confident in yourself because you are the one giving the information. You are the one sharing something to people. And that's why the third point comes in. Be prepared. So rehearse your script, rehearse your speech. If you have a script, you have to rehearse, rehearse it first. Jangan just tulis and then just harap to be able to wing it on stage. Don't do that. What I do when I was back then, uh, I used to have a cat at house at my house. And when my family was too busy, I would read my speech in front of my cat. Uh, that would also work because sometimes my parents would be busy, my siblings would be doing their homework. Or if I'm at the asrama, I would just practice in front of a mirror in the toilet. That's what I would yeah, do. Yeah, that's uh, it's a yeah. good idea. Yeah, so practice before your speech. If you're going to go for a speech, you're going to speak in front of people, practice first because during the practice, you will realize, alamak, when I say this, I tend to take too long to finish the sentence or I tend to 
uh, have a huge gap between the words. That's when you realize, okay, I need to improve that. Tapi the best thing is to help as a friend for help lah, atau as a family member because when you speak in front of them, they can tell you, alamak, I think uh, that part uh, you can change a bit. Ataupun, or oh, this part you should use a different word. Uh, yes, feedback very is very important. Yes, get yes, feedback before the actual speech. Try to get feedback. That will be a very big help. So that would be my three tips lah. Number one, yeah. Number one, you look at you look at places where there are no faces in the crowd lah. You look at a wall, you look at the floor, but don't make it too obvious. I thought sometimes if the crowd is very close, what I do is that I look at here, right between the eyes, at the bridge of the nose. So about looking at people's eyes is very nervous for some people. So you look right between here. Sometimes that helps. Uh, second was that uh, be confident because people don't know what you're going to say. Only you know. And number three, practice. Practice before the speech. Read the script in front of someone uh, and then try to get feedback. That will give you more confidence. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Great. That was uh, a lot of good information share. you shared today. Yes, great sharing session. Yeah. Very Daniel, interesting session. Gaming journalist, a brilliant, talented young man. <laughs> so once again, Borhan, thank you so much for joining us in the show. No really problem. Really appreciate your time and precious tips. And no I'm problem. very sure the students would have enjoyed it as well. I hope so. Okay. I hope so. Yeah, and uh, uh, in the future, I think I'll invite you again for another live session on game, sure. perhaps. Sure, sure, I don't mind. Anything is fine. Right. Uh, it's yeah. a very interesting slot. Yes, it's a very interesting topic. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this uh, Cikgu Anna, well, uh, Anna Sa I think that's says, all right, from Mohan, you are a yeah, classic yeah. example. So right. proud Thank of you. you. Uh, this you. is the Thank press. You. A lot lah. A lot. Yes, we are so proud of you. Yeah, you. they are very proud of you. Definitely, Burhan. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Teachers, any comment before we end the session? Uh, I, I think it's a very something. interesting topic uh, and I'm very yeah. happy. Wait, sorry, yes. sorry, Teacher Manjit. Uh, I just want to say that uh, it's very good to see a young man like you uh, being uh, doing so many things and uh, being such an inspiration to others. I hope the students who are watching will learn that it doesn't. You have you don't have to be perfect to speak English. And making mistakes is part of learning. I would say, don't be shy. I always tell my students that don't be shy if you make mistakes. You no, know, now mm. with people commenting, oh, you speak the word wrongly, uh, then they feel shy. It's becoming a trend to like no comment on other people's speech and all that. But yeah, I, I would say, take it as a constructive criticism. Whatever people mm. tell you is for you to learn from. I think you yes, will agree, me. right, Buranudin? Yeah. Correct. Uh, so I agree. That is, Completely uh, agree. Yeah. Yeah, because we nobody is perfect. I think we we teachers are also not perfect. Okay, we we are still learning, especially when it comes to technology. I think you are much better than us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining us, Teacher Manji. Uh, okay. thank you to Gorhan and also to Pan Farida. Such an interesting slot today, and I'm very impressed with you, Gorhan, that you are only 25 years old and you are all rounder in many ways and. You really motivated our students here. Thank you. You know, you, you show the credibility that you can speak well, and this will help our students to improve and do their best. Mm. That's okay. all. I'm, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to help. Yes. Cheng so Heidi. proud of you, Burhan. We are so Thank proud. You, Thank yeah. You, okay. So uh, I believe that all the students indeed, uh, they never expected that there's a live person coming and actually show them how to do the speaking. I think they just thought that, okay, today we are going to learn the tips just by, you know, looking at the slide. But indeed, I think all of them are really blessed to have you and most of them are inspired. Okay, because this is a real life and then they are students and some of them, I think, is your, maybe your junior. They actually wrote there, uh, maybe from your same school. I think oh, they are really, okay. uh, it's an eye opener to them. So uh, thank you for Cikgu Farida for your great lesson, for bringing a wonderful uh, uh, presenter here with us today. And then uh, he's, really, he's uh, I can... Today. <laughs> <laughs> but very I think, busy. Uh, yeah, from the lesson, I think all the students able to see the power of 5W and 1H. Because uh, Mr. Bohan kept on... Uh, Buha, Burha, Burhanin. Uh, keep uh, on it's it's okay, Teacher Heidi, you can just call me Burhan. Uh, Burhan, okay, Burhan. Burhan. Yeah, because I, I, I think you keep on impressed upon the student. 5W and 1H. For all mm -hmm. your explanation on your speaking, it's just that the student need to how to apply this question in order for them yeah. to speak. 
or else they have no idea to speak. But yeah, yeah that was very fast. All of very it, fast. Yeah, I think that is a very good practice for them. Of course, because uh, I think it's something new lah. Because students are not being taught like that, you know. Mm. But uh, yeah, I think it's a very good uh, something new lah for us teachers also. Hey, for us teacher to can yeah. Use the five W H ah. Uh? Five wives, yeah. one husband. One husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's very good. Remember, to use yeah, this so, technique. Yeah, so I think all the students really are blessed and inspired by you, and I'm sure they remember this slot. Okay, it has been a lively slot. Okay, uh, so uh, is there anything else, uh, Teacher Emily, you want to add on? No, it's okay. For this I session? think we are. I think uh, what we need to uh, take note is speaking is a skill that you need to practice. I mm. think all mm -hmm. of us here will agree. Whatever yes. language you are learning, yeah, uh, mm. you need to speak the language. And yes. when students are shy uh, and they don't want mm. to use or speak the language, that is where they yes. lose out. So True. it is right. good right. to see young people like Burhan and all that, you know, who speak the language. We may make mistakes. No, nobody is perfect. I'm not a native speaker. I also may make mistakes. But yeah, at the we same learn. Time, it's a process. Yeah, learning. we learn. It's a process, correct, the teacher Manjit. So I want the students to take note of this. Use the language. Now, sometimes when we do group discussion, we tell them to speak in English. They speak in Bahasa. They speak in Chinese. They speak in Tamil. <laughs> and they don't want to speak in English because why? They feel shy. So mm, this word, this yeah. word shy, uh, throw it away. Throw that, you know, yeah. the feeling of uh, feeling shy and all that. Because you want to learn, you have to make mistakes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, can can I can I add something for Teacher yes, Emily's please, point? Yes, please. Think, yes, yes. Uh, teacher please. Emily. Yeah, because Teacher Emily gave a very good example that I I think a lot of students uh, selalu terlupa. They always forget about this, which is there's not a lot of opportunities when you grow up, you know, for for trying out your skills. One of mm. the great blessings of being able to go to school is that's where you get to experiment, practice, and make mistakes. That's the most important part of going to school, going to university. Is that these places allow you to make mistakes. The thing is, when you grow up, when you're like me and you have like six, seven interviews a day. The interviews you cannot make mistake. Sometimes you'll be on live TV. Sometimes you go for a job interview. Those places are not for you for you to experiment yes. for you to make mistake. So you cannot yeah. ingat that when you have the opportunity to learn in school, to learn in university, experiment. You have make to try the language. Make full use of it. Make full use, correct? Because when you start working, especially in a in a in a very <laughs> intense yeah, industry. Yeah, you cannot make private a sector. when you're doing presentation. <laughs> yes, like yeah. and and believe me, when you work one day, there will always be a presentation. Maybe during a meeting, maybe you have exactly. to talk to clients or talk to shareholders. So all these things, those time, if you make a mistake, then sorry, it's a very like you're not giving a second chance. Uh, bye bye. Your boss so will say bye -bye. <laughs> correct, do? correct. So in school, jangan rasa malu because that's the best opportunity for you to learn. So what if you people laugh at you? Laugh exactly. Yes, laugh. People laughing at you is nothing. Wait till you get scolded by your boss. Now that's something to yes. cry about. Yes, uh. I like the point yeah. you share here because this uh. will give awareness to our students. Yeah. Life is not a bed of roses. Hmm, that's true. Uh, that's so true, hopefully that they will wake up and they will think about it. That they have their future. They are in the real world. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. All cool. right. Okay. Thank you for all the sharings. So, Jegu Farida, is there any uh, link that you would like to share to the student? Uh, as for today, we don't have any links. Okay. Maybe for right. coming class, okay, we can all right. share. Yeah. Link, yeah. So, so once again, uh, I would like to thank you, all the teachers here. I think all of them really enjoy themselves and also yeah. being a very informative lesson. Okay, and we see a real life. A speaker here who speak to us all right so i believe that after this lesson students you try to speak and don't be shy not it's it's okay to make mistake now but not after you start working right because when you have certain important like what uh mr buhadin Bahanidin just mentioned okay so so that's all for today uh remember all of our teacher here okay this is uh we are now at uh Jegu Farida's uh, Blessed Fairy channel. For those who have not subscribed to this channel, please click the red button and subscribe now. Okay, I believe all of you have been blessed by today's <laughs> lesson. And also, don't forget, please go to visit Teacher Emily channel as well. 
Okay, uh, I, I hope that you, Emily, uh, please help to post all the link, uh, our link, our YouTube link. Okay, I hope that all of you, please take some time to go and visit all our YouTube link. Cikgu Manjit, uh, myself, okay, and Cikgu Farida, and Cikgu Emily. And don't forget to subscribe us. And we will have our lesson next week also. So please stay tuned. You would not know who is coming to join us. Okay, uh, I think that's <laughs> all for today. All right, okay. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.